Efficiency, flexibility, versatility, ease of use. These are hallmarks of Python. PyMAPDL enriches the Pythonic version of APDL commands with categories to bring these hallmarks to all PyMAPDL workflows for all users. In this lesson, we will introduce five of the most often used PyMAPDL categories by reviewing some of the category functions and highlight how they add efficiency and ease of use to the PyMAPDL interactive workflow. As appropriate, we will discuss other features of the category. To do so, we will work our way through an example analysis of a lathe cutter. Okay, let's get started. What we are calling categories in PyMAPDL are various public classes, functions, and attributes. There are multiple reasons for these categories, and as discussed, two are ease and efficiency of use. For our users with a Python background, APDL can be an unfamiliar language. Some of the categories offer APDL functionality in a Python-style format that is more natural for Python users. For our users with more of an MAPDL background, in a manner similar to APDL macros, some of the categories package the functionality of multiple APDL and Python commands into one function to complete a particular task. Like some APDL commands, these categories can often be used across multiple stages of a finite element analysis workflow. To begin, let's review the workshop model up to the launching MAPDL. The model is a lathe cutter made of typical steel. Symmetry boundary conditions will be defined on these areas, with a sinusoidal pressure load that is a function of the applied area length defined here. We start by importing OS and NumPy. NumPy will be used for working with arrays, some functions, and a constant. The OS module provides operating system dependent functions. Now, let's define the path to be the current working directory, the constant pi, and two variables for typical values of Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of steel. Now we are ready to launch MAPDL, which has options. This example will result in MAPDL generated files, so to make them easy to find, we use the JupyterLab working directory as the mechanical APDL working directory as well. The parameters category is a complement to the APDL commands for working with MAPDL parameters. Let's first do a quick recap of parameters in mechanical APDL. In MAPDL, single-valued variables are called parameters, while multi-valued are arrays. Parameters are used to hold both input and result values. Arrays come in two styles. Table arrays are used mainly to define inputs, and we will cover this later in the lathe model. Arrays are often used to gather data for manipulation and export. Some APDL commands result in data in automatically collected to a parameter or an array. The parameter category is also an ease of use tool that can be used to define a mechanical APDL parameter with a value or an expression. Enclosing the value in single quotes results in a character parameter. The command without a parameter name will return the list of mechanical APDL parameters and their values. The parameter values can be returned to a Python variables. The same holds true for array parameters. Moving back to the lathe model, we next read the supplied lathe cutter CAD file. Most MAPDL input file types can include parameters, so MAPDL.parameters is used to inspect whether there are any defined in the file, and we see that there are. The length of the area with the applied pressure will be needed later, so this is captured to a Python variable. And the unit system will be set to match that of the input file. The Python variables holding the material property values will be used in defining the material model. The rest of the Py MAPDL commands mesh the volume and define the symmetry boundary conditions. Looking ahead, the next Py MAPDL category used will be a volume plot, so let's discuss plotting a bit. The plotting category is another addition that makes Py MAPDL versatile and easy to use. The instance of mechanical APDL that PI MAPDL starts runs as a batch process for outputs. This means that MAPDL plots would be static images. The plotting category brings interactive plotting to PI MAPDL 
which is extremely useful when running PyMAPDL in an interactive environment like Jupyter Lab. The MAPDL plot controls are not currently used by this category, though the category does respect other settings such as MAPDL selection. The various CAD plot commands include their own setup arguments, which includes the star star KW args from the general plotter. Let's review a few examples with the lathe model. In step three, a local coordinate system is defined at the corner of the area where the pressure will be applied. The local x direction is along the long edge of the area. Normally, we would plot something like the volume with local coordinate system symbol turned on for verification. Let's try that. Set the areas to be shown in different colors and the edges in a bolded black. Other useful options are C POS that sets the camera position. As we can see, the local coordinate system symbol is not included. We can save a static image by setting VTK equal to false. This results in a mechanical APDL saving a screenshot to a PNG file, which shows up in the list of files. This file can be open as well. We can see that the local coordinate system is defined. Looking ahead, we see that the mapdl.load underscore table will be used soon. So as before, let's discuss the mapdl category first. In addition to the Pythonic versions of APDL commands, the mapdl category extends some APDL commands to make them more Python friendly. Two examples are the apdl star git and star v git commands, which retrieve scalar and vector data from the mapdl database into mapdl parameters array or arrays, respectively. This category includes mapdl.git underscore value and mapdl.git underscore array, which do the same, but return the data directly into a Python variable or array. This makes the commands more efficient as they wrap two functions, gathering the data in mechanical APDL and transferring it to Python into one function. If you have viewed the ANSYS Innovation course APDL class more on parameters, you will have learned that MAPDL has a type of array, a table, that is especially useful when defining APDL command inputs as functions. An example is applied pressure as a function of time. The Python module NumPy does not have a table type array, so this category includes mbpdl.load underscore table that can take a Python array and load it into mbpdl as a table. For users developing a Py mbpdl script interactively, like in JupyterLab, the category includes mbpdl.open underscore GUI, which can be a valuable development tool. It saves the mbpdl database, closes the mbpdl instance opened by Py mbpdl, launches MAPDL interactively, and resumes the save MAPDL database. The Py MAPDL script developer can then work with the model in MAPDL. This can be helpful in several ways from checking your work up to that point to practicing an APDL command that you may not be familiar with and would like immediate feedback. Any work done in the MAPDL interactive session does not affect the Py MAPDL session once MAPDL interactive is, is exited. Once exited, the, Py, the MAPDL instance in PyMAPDL is started back up and we continue, continue to write the script. Okay, let's get back to the lathe model and define the load. To define the pressure load, we will first define a vector of x positions along with the pressure area. 10 should be as sufficient. Then a pressure vector that is a half sine shape is defined. The two vectors are then stacked into the correct array shape for MAPDL table array. The table is then loaded into MAPDL using MAPDL.load underscore table with the primary variable as X location and using the local coordinate system with ID 11. This table is then used to define the pressure load on the area nodes, being sure to enclose that table name and percent signs. As a sanity check, we can list the pressure array table from mechanical APDL and compare it to the pressure array defined in Python. Or we could use the mapdl.open GUI discussed earlier to inspect the phi.dl model. 
We continue with the model by entering the solution processor, turning on the pressure applied load symbols as a contour plot, and issuing an mapdl.eplot command to produce an mapdl style image where we can see the pressure does have a sign shape to it. To complete the solution, we turn on large reflection and solve. MAPDL solution is another category that has Python style star get functions to retrieve information about the solution. Looking ahead, a vertical application where the user interface is a web browser form, which returns the convergence status would be a quick and straightforward way of informing the user that the solution is completed as intended. The post-processing category brings a Pythonic structure to MAPDL post-processing. It addresses the need to post-process with interactive plots, like plotting, when running PyMAPDL in an interactive environment. And it brings the parameter category type versatility by making it easy to return arrays of mechanical APDL results to Python. Like plotting, it respects the result of PyMAPDL selection commands. Back to the lathe cutter model, let us go ahead and try plotting the nodal first principal stress. As with plotting, entity selections are respected. So let's do this by selecting a set of nodes on the model, then select all of the elements that have at least one of those nodes, and then finish by selecting all the nodes of the selected elements. Then plot the same result with the element edges shown in white. For the last plot, let's look at the contour legend or what is known as a scalar bar in Python. Using a Python data structure dictionary, we can change the text color, position, number of contour labels, among others. Issue the plot one more time. Click on the dot 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 to see an alternate method of defining a dictionary with some additional legend controls that you can practice with. Now, if we issue the same command without the leading plot, an array of result values is returned. The category results are all single results, but let us say we would like to capture all three principal stresses in an array. First, we will select nodes that meet an upper first principal stress value just to make the list size reasonable and reissue the post-processing listing command. We can use the mesh category to check the number of selected nodes we will revisit the mesh category later. MAPDL can list nodal results with PRNSOL command. Now, if we wrap the command in a print, we get back a listing. However, we would prefer to have these in an array. For ease of use, PyMAPDL extends the Pythonic version of some APDL listing commands with additional methods. That is, we can choose to return the values to a list, an array, or a data frame. A data frame is a spreadsheet type of view. The data frame is a pandas feature. Pandas is a Python module for working with structured data and time series, much like a spreadsheet. And one function of pandas is the ability to write out the data frame to many different formats. CSV is a traditional format employed by mechanical APDL users. As with the convergence status, the JSON or HTML format would be inappropriate for users developing a browser run in to some analysis. Lastly, the PyMAPDL category mesh really brings versatility and efficient Python-like functions to our workflow. The category contains functions for retrieving mesh information, such as the selected node numbers list that we did earlier. 
the mapdl.mesh.grid returns a VTK unstructured grid data of the finite element mesh. This really opens PyMAPDL to working with various other Python modules and makes for a versatile workflow. Here we can capture the first principal stress values to a list, then associate them with the unstructured grid. A grid slice with normal in this global Z direction is defined, then the slice plotted. Other predefined slice functions are available, like this orthogonal, which slices by three orthogonal planes aligned with the global coordinate system. Select the dot 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 to see an example of plotting multiple aligned slices. With that, we have completed the learning objective of this lesson. In this video, we have learned of various Pi MAPDL categories that extend Pi MAPDL from the Pythonic version of APDL commands that enhance its use. Several of the often used categories were reviewed via their use in a structural analysis. This concludes the video and we'll continue our learning in the next video.